well, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's by Mandy. My name is Amanda, and today I'm showing you my thrifted sweater collection. Normally, I post knitting content on this channel, but a side passion of mine that has been influenced by knitting has been collecting or thrifting uh, really nice quality sweaters. As knitters, I think we feel less inclined to pay full retail price for sweaters because we often feel, oh, we could probably make that ourselves or we could make that ourselves in a nicer fiber than what they sell, especially in fast fashion stores or other stores. I know I really don't like wearing anything like polyester sweaters anymore. Uh, so I usually don't find myself buying fast fashion and then usually spending the remaining funds I have on nice yarns for knitting. That being said, there's a little gap in my wardrobe while I'm trying to knit everything up and I can't help but get really excited when I see these natural fiber sweaters at thrift stores. So over the past three years, I've collected some really nice pieces and I want to share them with you all. They have over a retail value of $1,000 if I were to buy them all at the store today. I know inflation has really knocked prices up a lot in the past few months, uh, but I don't have historical sweater pricing technology. If you do, let me know. I'd be really interested to hear about it. Before we get into this video, like I said, I collected these pieces over three years, I'd like to encourage everyone to thrift responsibly, try not to buy out whole stores when you go there. We are in a surplus of garment and fabric waste on the planet, uh, but no need to over shop or over consume. Like it is still over consuming even if you're thrifting. So always, always try to consume responsibly. I like looking for things and finding things that are good quality fibers that I know will last a long time and that I'll like to wear for a long time. I don't see myself getting rid of many of these pieces, maybe one or two uh, in the near future. So that's my little plug for thoughtfully and intentionally consuming when you're going to the thrift. I'm gonna go through and talk about sweaters from the time at which I bought them. Let's get into it. Before I got into knitting, I was really into Madewell. I'm still very into Madewell as a brand. They're one of my favorite jean places to shop from, uh, but I don't really buy sweaters from them anymore. So I bought this during the pandemic, I think, around my birthday in 2021, and I wore it for my 25th birthday celebrations. And this is called the Desert Valley Fringe Sweater, and it's this beautiful uh, buttonless cardigan with a bunch of cabling details, this fringe, which feels very like 2017, like indie vibe. I just feel like a lot of sweaters had this. I've never really gave these a good steam, so they don't really lay flat. These almost look like crocheted panels here and a garter stitch band with some cabling here. The sweater is super warm. It's 100% merino wool. It has these cute pockets. I actually have this listed on my Poshmark right now because unfortunately I don't actually wear it that much, even though I feel like it is in my style. Uh, I'll link it in my description if you're interested in purchasing. But I think this was one of the first sweaters that put me on to how nice wool can feel uh, and how warm it is because this is a very warm sweater. Don't remember this next sweater being so transparent, but this is a Lord & Taylor merino wool turtleneck that I thrifted also during the early days of the pandemic where that was like one of the only things that you could do. Let's go thrifting with your face mask on. I was very excited when I found this sweater in the thrift store. Uh, I thought it would be really fun as a, as a transitional piece for spring and fall. It's definitely too warm to wear here in the summer in DC because of the turtleneck and because of the wool. And it was actually in the shop because I think it had a few moth holes, which I've actually had fixed. So that's a tip is if you see items that have moffles in them, I know some people are brave enough to uh, fix them. I was not. I took this to my local dry cleaner and I had some of the holes fixed up. It's not the prettiest fix, but I'm a big believer in fixing our clothes before just throwing them away. And why would I let a good merino turtleneck go to waste? So this is the hot pink merino turtleneck from Lord & Taylor. I actually have, this is the first of three Lord & Taylor pieces I have in my collection, which I don't think I've even ever stepped foot inside of a Lord & Taylor. So 
that's kind of exciting. And um, the merino wool is very soft. It's not itchy. I do have some merino pieces here that are itchy, which I find interesting as a knitter because usually the merino yarns that I've worked with, they're known for being very soft, so they're not itchy. So I would like to know maybe where that discrepancy comes from. This next piece is probably the softest and the most expensive piece that I have in my wardrobe. Uh, most expensive retail price, but I actually got this one for free. A friend gifted it to me, but she had thrifted this and ended up not liking the fit. This is an All Saints cashmere sweater, and it is so soft. I don't think I will ever get rid of this sweater. It is just so lovely. I believe this is also one that I took to the valet, the valet, the tailor. I took to the tailor to get updated. It has this um, kind of like unfinished outside seaming detail along the pits and the center and the back. Um, and it comes down quite long, which I think is not ideal, but I usually either tuck it in or kind of just roll it up. Uh, and a sweater like this, I looked it up, if you went on All Saints right now and wanted to buy a cashmere sweater from them, it'd be about 250 pounds, which is $300 USD. So I got this for free 99 and it is a $300 sweater. I don't even really knit with cashmere. So it feels really special to have pieces like this in my wardrobe. And I wear this a ton. I've gotten so much wear out of this since my friend has gifted it to me. These next three sweaters I got all in the same thrift store at the same time. It was a very good thrift day. Uh, if you live in the DMV area, one of my favorite places to thrift is a shop called Be Thrifty in Annandale, Virginia. It is also right next to a Goodwill, which I think has good stuff sometimes. Um, Be Thrifty, I think is a little bit bigger, but great area if you're looking to thrift in the DMV area. It's also right next by to a food hall. There's a H Mart there. So there's like a whole afternoon for you right there. That is one of my favorite places to thrift. This first sweater that I got in the haul is a Brooks Brother Merino sweater in this lovely tweed teal color. It has lots of flecks of different yellows and blues and reds, and it's this really nice blue-green color. This is definitely a sweater, I will say, that you can feel on your skin. It has a bit of an itch factor, but it's not itchy, if that makes sense. It is still one of my most worn sweaters, and I do feel that the more that I wear it, the softer that it gets. I get an insane amount of wear out of this sweater. It is just a boxy, oversized, drop shoulder sweater. It is so, so basic, but I think in between the color and the fit and the feel, it is such a good fit for my wardrobe. This is a bit of a deep cut, but it always reminds me of the scene in Bye Bye Birdie, where uh, the main character is singing How Lovely to Be a Woman. I feel like she puts on a sweatshirt like this or a sweater like this, and I just feel like it's so cozy, boxy, and I get a lot of everyday wear, but it still feels like a really nice piece. This is basically just a bougie sweatshirt. <laughs> Looking on the Brooks Brother website, they actually don't sell a lot of merino sweaters anymore. They sell a lot of cotton and Pima cotton sweaters. Um, the one men's sweater I could find was retailed at $200. It did have a design on it, so I would think maybe something like this would be around $150 uh, if they did still sell it, but they don't. That's also a brand that I don't shop at. Um, it's just one that honestly that's never really crossed my mind. I think I'm a little not their demographic. <laughs> not a little, a lot not their demographic, which is fine. Uh, I will pick up the things from the thrift. This next sweater is another retail merino wool sweater, and this one is by Banana Republic. It's in this lovely camel color, which I think is so classic and timeless. This is actually a size medium. My theory is that the original owner may have shrunk this sweater and it didn't fit them anymore. Um, you can make the argument that this doesn't necessarily fit me. I kind of just like to think that these are three quarter length sleeves uh, and it has more of a cropped 
fit. As opposed to the sweater that I just tried on, I feel like this is a more streamlined sweater. I've worn this for a lot of job interviews and when I have to work in person at events. Uh, so I really like this sweater. Again, it is one that I can feel on my skin. This is probably one of the least expensive retail values on the list. Merino wool sweaters at Banana Republic run to about $85 currently. I get so much wear out of this, like I said, especially for work settings or work calls that I just want to feel a little more put together. I feel like it almost has a preppy look while also being classic and I can still add my own kind of style and flair to it. I wouldn't necessarily consider or uh, put myself into a preppy category when describing my style, but when I need to look a little profesh or even just a little chic, I reach for this sweater in my closet. So this next sweater is the second Lord & Taylor cardigan or sweater from my collection. This was also the last sweater that I got where I got the last two previous sweaters in the same thrift haul. And then trust me, I felt like I struck gold that day. This is a cable knit sweater. I think this is the only cable knit one that I have. It is very long. So I'll show you in the B-roll, but it comes down um, mid thigh. And I've actually worn this as a dress the two times that I've worn it. So this is something that I probably don't get a lot of wear out, mostly due to the length. Um, I think maybe I could be more experimental with it when wearing it open or a tank top with jeans. I think that could be a really fun look. Uh, but this is also another sweater that has that preppy vibe. I think just due to the cable knits and the color, the camel color, I think again, gives that very classic look. And I guess you could tell I was drawn to that in this, in this shopping trip. Uh, and this is another one that I had taken to the tailor to get fixed. So I don't get too much wear out of this, but this is a good reminder that I have this in my closet uh, while the weather is still a little cold here where I live. And I hope to wear this more in the future, but it's really cute and honestly kind of sexy when you wear it with knee high boots and tights. The thing is, I just don't go to a lot of places in the winter where I would need to wear something like that. Um, and tights are definitely not my favorite thing to wear. So that is my second Lord & Taylor sweater in my thrifted sweater collection. Those last three sweaters I bought when I went to the thrift store probably over a year ago. And I more recently picked some things up this winter. And these next two sweaters I got in the same haul and are the end of my collection. So there is a story about the sweater that I'm wearing right now. It is a Gap cotton sweater, probably the cheapest retail value um, of all of these sweaters because of the store that it's from and because of the material that it's made out of. Uh, but as a sweaty girl, I could not be more happy to have a cotton sweater in my uh, collection. I know that people say merino wool wicks more moisture and to a degree that is true, but to a further degree, there is only you know, a maximum or minimum temperature that I can get away wearing merino wool in. Uh, so this is another great transitional piece and it's really fun, especially for spring. So I was actually thinking of knitting a sweater like this after seeing a video of a Vogue fashion editor, editor talk about her favorite sweater. And it was a striped turtleneck sweater from Gap, which is from a holiday collection in the early 2000s. And it had more bold jewel toned colors, uh, not these really kind of pastel rainbow colors. And I just thought it was so cool. I thought of maybe buying a bunch of different colors of blown chunky yarn and knitting up a turtleneck like that. Uh, but then I went to the thrift like the same weekend. I saw that TikTok and I swear to you, this was on the end of the rack. I was so excited when I found this and I was like, no way. And I looked at the label and it was Gap. And I was like, well, I have to get it. It's 100% cotton. I don't think I would have gotten it if it was like polyester or something like that. But because it was 100% cotton and so close to the item that I thought of, I thought, let's give it a whirl. If not, I think this is something that could get legs on Poshmark um, or I could give it to a friend if I really didn't like it, but I really like it. It's oversized. It feels like something my mom would have worn like in the 90s and 
I really like that feeling. Um, I like looking in the mirror and seeing like a version of my mom. Is that weird? Anybody else feel that way? It just feels comfortable. There's something about it that feels very familiar and like very like kindergarten teacher in the best way possible. Shout out to teachers. Uh, so that is my Gap sweater. I'm not sure. I don't think this is from a holiday collection. This is probably from a spring collection if I had to give it a guess due to the material and the colors. Uh, but I really like this. And if you bought a uh, cotton sweater today at Gap, that might be around 60 to $50. Um, and Gap's one of those stores that's always running sales. So I feel like you could get it for even cheaper. So one of the cheaper ones, but definitely the brightest, sunniest, cheeriest one in the collection. Next sweater is one that you may have seen before on my channel. And for a while, I had my sights set on a knitting a pink cardigan. And I was actually in the process of knitting a pink cardigan when I found this sweater the same day that I found the Gap sweater. So if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I finished the Whitmore cardigan in a very bright pink. Uh, this winter, but I also found this hot pink cardigan and I couldn't pass it up because it was Lord & Taylor Cashmere. This might be my favorite sweater in my collection due to the color. I think that the hot pink, like I said, I think it is one of my colors. I think it's very flattering. I think it's super fun. This is also one of those pieces that has a preppy feel just due to the classic silhouette, but the color makes it so fun. So it's great for either wearing on work calls or I can wear this to brunch with the girls or just if I just want to look a little schnazzy when I go out. Um, and this is super, super warm. Cashmere really is warm. There's a reason. And a sweater like this would retail for $150 on Lord & Taylor today. So this was such a great find and I'm so happy with the color. I now get to have two pink cardigans, one that I made myself and one that was an awesome thrift find. And I couldn't think of two more gratifying feelings. So... This is probably one of my favorites and the last of the collection. I already get a lot of wear out of this. I would say my most worn sweaters are this one. The Brooks Brothers uh, sweater is a very, I think probably first, if not a close second. And then I would say uh, a tie between the Banana Republic sweater and the All Saints sweaters. So there really is something to be said, I think about having these classic pieces in your wardrobe. I do also think it frees me up a little in my knitting uh, to have these classic drop shoulder kind of raglan pieces. They don't, they aren't raglans, I think, in construction, but they give a raglan feel, kind of that classic stockinette sweater that um, maybe I can spend more time knitting cardigans or other, other items that, that I would like in my wardrobe. So I wonder if any other you knitters out there have this same passion for nice thrifted sweaters. Uh, if you do, I'd love to know what you found recently and maybe this would give you a good idea for some brands and some materials to look out next time that you're at the thrift store. So thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you all spending my time with me and stay tuned for some more knitting content coming soon. See y'all later. Bye.